Welcome to the Joey Miller Podcast, and we're going to be talking all about growing to where you want to go today. So grab your Bible, grab your pen, and let's jump in to God's Word. We are going to grow into the person that we want to become. Where we want to go, we need to grow into. So turn with me, if you have your Bibles, to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. We're going to talk about becoming. You know, the word becoming literally defined is to grow into into something to change to metamorphosize so to say and I was thinking about our relationship and our walks with God and how often we focus on where we're going so much that it's almost some uh, fictional point in our life where we're just going to cross over this threshold of destiny and everything that we have ever envisioned that God has put into our spirits is just going to be manifested around us and that's just not how It works. It's not how the kingdom of God works. That there is actually a process to becoming. That every promise is an invitation to a process. So today, if you feel like I'm not there yet, this podcast is for you. Uh, Today, if you feel like I uh, I have so much further to go, and God is just putting His finger on all these different areas of my life, this podcast is for you. Because, like I said before, we grow where we want to go in our lives. Let's take a look at the book of Colossians chapter 3. It says this. Let's start in verse 5. It says, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. I love what it says, put to death what's earthly in you. And it goes on the list, sexual immorality, impurity, passions, evil desires, idolatry. On account of the wrath of God is coming. It says, in these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them away. Anger, wrath, malice, it it repeats them for us. Uh, Obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, listen to this, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. So uh, we're we're seeing here, the Apostle Paul is saying, if we're going to grow in Christ, there is a putting away and there is a putting on that has to happen. And this is the becoming process, that you're becoming somebody new. I don't know, maybe you're listening today and you uh, ha- are in the stage where you have just wore yoga pants for the past week. And all of a sudden, what happens? You have a date night. And what do you do? You you put take off your yoga pants and you put on something better. And you're like, wow. I feel like a whole new person. I feel so good. I threw some lipstick on. I did my hair. And and so it's this moment of transformation through taking off and putting on something else. And he says, you're in doing this, you're actually becoming renewed in the knowledge after the image of your creator. So when you're taking off all the, the things of self, when you're putting away the way that you used to act and you're putting on the new things, what's happening is you are becoming transformed. Uh, Another translation of that renewal process in the scripture actually is the word become. You're becoming more and more like Jesus every step of the way. We're ever growing and ever changing in our lives. Now, if you want to grow and if you want to grow into your destiny because that's what happens you don't arrive there you you grow into it you know if you think about your life right now and where you are and you rewind maybe one or even two years ago for some of you maybe even six months ago and you look at your life you can realize well I wasn't I'm not even the same person that I used to be in fact my kids remind me of this often we laugh and say, mom is a save, the safest, the, the most saved version of herself that she has ever been. When my kids were younger, I wasn't getting much sleep. And I was just like all the time, like just on edge. And so I was easy to snap. I was easy to get angry with them. I was more impatient when we were out in public. And, and looking back, we laugh because that is like not me at all. It's such an old version of me. In fact, it takes a lot to get me upset. Uh, and even so, I mean, I don't even know. It, I mean, it takes a lot. I, and just the other day, m- my daughter said, Mom, you are so patient. And I don't, I don't boast in that in myself. I say, wow, look at the work that the Lord has done in me as I've applied myself, put off the old and put on the 
new, uh, that you actually do become a new person in him. And so, you know, maybe today you're, you're not where you want to be yet, but you're surely not where you were, that there's been a transformation process. We haven't arrived yet. None of us have arrived yet, but we're constantly grabbing a hold of the invitation to become more and more like our creator, taking off and putting on new things. You know, when I think about somebody in the Bible who became the best version of himself and and understanding how patient the Lord was with him, I think of Simon Peter. Simon Peter was rough. I don't know if you were rough when you got saved or not, but uh, some of us had some rough edges around us. In fact, we laugh at church now even with somebody who might get saved and they're not, uh, they have no religion or, or no reference point of Christianity, they'll come up and they'll use a swear word. They'll be like, that was the beep, beep, beepest service I've ever been in. Or, you know, what was that? I felt the presence of God and it blanked me up. You know, they'll say these things and we have to laugh because, uh, you know, God isn't worried about you cleaning up and then coming to him. He said, just come to me and I'll clean you up. And that's how he chose his disciples. He didn't pick the most religious. He didn't pick the Pharisees or the Sadducees of the day. He didn't go into the temple to pick his disciple. He went out into the waters, into the sea, and he grabbed himself some fishermen. And one of them was Simon Peter. And Simon Peter was just a wild card. Simon Peter would just tell you whatever was on his mind. He would be the disciple that would speak up and say what everybody else was thinking. And so, uh, you know, this this got Simon into trouble sometimes, but it also uh, had him cause him to rise up in sort of a leadership role because he was such a loud mouth. And so we saw Simon Peter was this like wild card, and yet Jesus chose him. And Simon didn't always do it right. I mean, he he witnessed amazing things. He saw Jesus raise somebody from the dead. He, he was on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. He was pulled in to Jesus's inner circle because Jesus saw leadership and potential and a destiny on Simon Peter, but he wasn't there yet. He hadn't arrived yet. He had some becoming and some growing that he still had to do. Thanks for tuning into the podcast today. If you want more things uh, to encourage your faith, check out joeymiller.co. It's the website that I've created to encourage you all month long. The beginning of each new month, I upload new content. We have blogs that go up weekly, monthly declarations. We have a scripture that we declare all month long, as well as some of my favorite things for you to check out. So head over to joeymiller.co today and be encouraged all month long. And so, uh, so we see that, that Simon, he's, he's really outspoken and he tells Jesus, he's like, look, Jesus, I will never, ever leave you. Like, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm stuck to you. I am like your biggest fan. You call me out on the water. I walked on the water, Jesus. And he's telling him this right before Jesus goes to the cross. And what do we see happens? And Jesus says, one of you is going to deny me three times. And it happens to be Simon Peter, this person who said, you know what, I've arrived, like I'm here, I'm in my destiny, I'm, I'm in a great place. When trial came, uh, Simon Peter bailed. And I think about that in our lives because we can fool ourselves into thinking that we are in a growing or a becoming state that we're not really at, that we're saying, God, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for all that you have for me. And, and God is saying, not yet. Like you're cute, you're sweet, you're growing, but you're not there yet. In fact, you know, he, he knew that Peter was going to betray him three times. And, and so he said, you're just not there in the metamorphosis process yet. There's some old that has to come off still, and there's some new that you need to choose to put on to walk in. And maybe that's where you're at. You're frustrated and you're like, I'm not arriving at my destiny yet. God, I was ready like five years ago for this thing. And let me remind you of his sovereignty that he knows better than you do. What's going to happen when a hardship comes? What's going to happen when a trial comes? What's going to happen when somebody doesn't like you or doesn't invite you uh, to speak somewhere? What's going to happen when somebody talks bad about you or when somebody leaves your life? It's in those moments that it reveals where we're at in the becoming process. And if there's anything in us that still needs to be put off and some good things that need to put on, 
God is so gracious that he is not going to expose us to our destiny at an improper time. And so, you know, Peter wasn't ready yet. He wasn't ready for the moment to walk in the fullness of the potential that God knew, that Jesus knew that he had inside of him. When he called him, he knew that, that Peter had so much potential but the rough edges needed to be uh, taken off of him. He needed to become. He needed to be renewed in the knowledge of his creator. And so, you know, Jesus dies and, and the disciples scatter and Peter uh, denies Jesus three times. And then the ascension happens and Peter sees Jesus in the water and, and, and Peter dives in. That's a part of Peter that, that Jesus loves, his willingness to, to cling to Jesus. And, and as you're becoming, you know, what is your willingness to throw yourself all in to whatever Jesus wants you to do to to say you know what I'm willing to take an honest assessment of my life and realize that I'm not there yet I'm willing to realize that there's some old self that still needs to go in order for me to become you're constantly becoming into your destiny yes I said that right might sound like weird English but you're becoming into your destiny you're growing into the fullness of the potential that God has called you to and some of us might never reach it on this side of eternity but it's a constant becoming process that we're getting closer. We're becoming our destinies revealed. We're becoming more like him, more of our destinies revealed. We're becoming more is revealed. And so it's a process as we walk with Jesus. And when Peter saw Jesus, he threw himself into the water and Jesus reestablishes him. And he says, uh, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? And in fact, when Jesus called Peter, he called him Peter. And then he used the, Aram uh, the Aramaic Aramaic term for stone. The very first time he met Peter, he, he called him Peter uh, of the stone. And so we see here he reestablishes him. He saw that in Peter. He saw the destiny and the potential in Peter at the very moment he met him. Yet fast forward to after all of this has happened, he's walked with Peter. Peter's left him and, and he goes back and he reestablishes him. And he says, Peter, on this rock, on, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Take care of my sheep love my sheep. He's reestablishing the call that he had on Peter the whole time in that life. Why? Because Peter was becoming. Peter had failed, but he was quick to run back to Jesus. And so let me let me encourage you today that if you want to get closer to your destiny, even in the moments that you feel like you're failing, don't stop. Don't quit. Don't revert back. Keep throwing yourself to Jesus. Keep saying, you know, I don't, I can't get this right in my own strength, but I'm throwing myself on the altar again. And I'm saying, do with me what you will, because I just want everything that you have for me. And don't you know that Peter, he started to become, the more he was with Jesus, the more he was challenged, the trials, when he had a second chance again, that, that Peter was actually the most influential of all of the apostles, that, that he wrote first and second Peter, that he turned the world upside down. On the day of Pentecost, he gave the, the most bold sermon ever and saw thousands come to know the Lord. He kicked off the Acts church. He kicked off the New Testament church. Peter, the one that had made so many mistakes, but Jesus saw potential in Peter and he called it out in him, the becoming, the destiny, the becoming more like him, more the destiny. And, and so all of a sudden, Peter was walking in the fullness of what he was called to do. And let me encourage you today, keep becoming. Keep growing in the fullness of God. Keep growing up, Ephesians talks about in Ephesians 4.15. Growing up in the things of God. Saying, God, I'm yielding to you. There's areas in my life that I need to still put off some old and put on some new. Show me. Every day, every day challenge yourself to say, how am I growing? How am I becoming more like Jesus today? And before you know it, you will be walking in your destiny. Listen, you're created on purpose for a purpose. The Lord sees something in you and he has called it out. He, he didn't call it out after you were perfect. He called it out when you met him, when you encountered him, when you got saved. He saw that potential in you. And from that point on, it was a process of becoming more and more like him to walk in the fullness of his purpose for you. And so I'm believing today you're encouraged to do that. Continue to become more like Christ, and you'll see your destiny unfold before you. Until next time, I'll talk to you on the Joey Miller Podcast.